Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the calculation of the cubic root of a complex number 2 plus 11i. Each complex number has three cubic roots. Assume we have one of them. Then the other two complex cubic roots can be easily obtained by a simple multiplication. In other words, we only need to find one cubic root. I'm going to present three approaches. First, we can use a system of homogeneous equations. The problem can be also solved by using conjugate complex numbers. And we can also do the calculation by a trigonometrical identity. The first approach, let x and y be real numbers, such that x plus yi cubed equals 2 plus 11i. Expand the left-hand side, we have x cubed plus 3x squared yi plus 3xyi squared plus yi cubed equals 2 plus 11i. We know i squared equals negative 1. We can rearrange the term based on real and the imaginary parts. Then we compare the real parts and the imaginary parts for right and the left hand side. We establish a system of equations in X and Y. Look at the equations. They are left hand sides a homogeneous polynomial and the right hand side are constant. To solve this type of equations, we simply do a cross multiplication. The left hand side of the first equation times the right hand side of the second equation equals uh, the other way around. Then we end up with a plain homogeneous, homogeneous equations. This, this polynomial can be factored x minus 2y times a quadratic polynomial. A little bit of diversion. So um, this is the factorization is similar to the one of single variable cubic polynomial with the same coefficient. So we see this single variable polynomial has a root t equal 2. And we can use a long division to have um, factorization. You can compare the, uh, the homogeneous polynomial with the uh, single variable polynomial. See their similarity. Let's let x minus 2y equal 0. Actually, after the factorization, we have two cases. But uh, as we just mentioned, we only need one simple solution. So we just take the simple one, x minus 2y equals 0. Then x equals 2y. Plug in the first equation. And we solve that. We got y equals 1. Then x equals 2 and the cubic root is z equal 2 plus i. And of course, the other curve of cubic roots of 2 plus a and i are obtained accordingly. The second one, we are going to use conjugate complex numbers. So let alpha be, the, be one of the cubic roots of 2 plus a and i, and the beta is the cubic roots of 2 minus 11i, which is the conjugate complex number of 2 plus 11i.
Then we have alpha cubed plus beta cubed equals four and alpha cubed times beta cubed equals 125. Alpha and beta are all complex numbers. So um, there may be several cases. We just take the, uh, the simple cases that alpha times beta equals five, which is, is one of the cubic roots of 125. This is a simple case. And then we have the following system of equations in alpha and beta. Alpha cubed plus beta cubed equals four. Alpha times beta equals five. We establish a parameter t defined to be alpha plus beta. Then t cubed is alpha plus beta cubed expanded alpha square alpha cubed plus three alpha squared beta plus three alpha beta squared plus beta cubed. Rearrange the term. We know alpha cubed plus beta cubed is four alpha times beta is five alpha plus beta is t. We have t cubed equals four plus three times five times t. So we established a cubic equation in t. This equation has three rules. One of the solution is t equals four, which is alpha plus beta. We only need one of them. Alpha plus beta equals four, alpha times beta equals five, and by Vieta's formula, alpha and the beta are the roots of x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals zero. This equation has two complex roots, two plus or minus i. We, know, we don't know which is alpha is which is beta. By checking, we know two plus i is alpha. And we are done. The third approach using trigonometric functions. Let r times cosine theta plus i times sine theta be a cubic root of two plus 11i. This is the definition. And then we have r cubed times cosine three theta plus i sine three theta equal two plus 11i. r cubed is the absolute value of two plus 11i, which is square root of 125. And the tangent three theta is sine three theta over cosine three theta equals 11 over two. We have r equals square root of five. The remaining thing is to calculate cosine three theta and the sine three theta using the fact that tangent three theta equals 11 over two. I'm going to derive a triple angle formula for tangent function. Tangent three theta equals tangent two theta plus one theta. Using the sum of tangent function, we have tangent two theta plus tangent theta over one minus tangent two theta times tangent theta. And then using double angle formula for tangent function, we get this complex expression, but it is not that bad. We can multiply one or one minus tangent square of theta on the numerator and the denominator and get it simplified. So we established a triple angle formula for tangent function. Everything is in terms of tangent theta. Let's tangent theta 
equals t. And we already know tangent 3 theta is 11 over 2. So we establish an equation in t. Clean it up, we have a third order polynomial in t. One of the roots is one half, so tangent theta is one half. And we can derive cosine theta and the sine theta. Uh, 2 over square root of 5 and 1 over square root of 5. Actually, there's another scenario. Both cosine theta and tan sine theta are negative, but we only try the positive one, and if it works, we are done. Actually, then we have the cubic root of 2 plus 11i would be r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. We plug in everything we have. We got 2 plus i, and we are done. As a conclusion, we notice that all three approaches involve solving a cubic equation. This is not a coincidence. So we are trying to find cubic roots of a complex number. So it's very natural we end up with solving a cubic equation. So these three approaches look very different, but uh, in, they are essentially based on the same idea. I also provide an exercise, simplify the cubic root of two plus square root of five. So you can use the first approach by establishing a system of homogeneous equations or the second approach something similar to the conjugate complex number. You can try it. And uh, finally, uh, if you like my video, please subscribe and share with your friends. I appreciate your support. That's all I have today. Thank you for watching.